To me, RVing is all about camping. We like being close to the elements, whether it's near enough to the waves to feel the spin drift on our faces. Okay, maybe not quite that close. Or camping on a meadow in a national forest somewhere. But usually that means being away from hookups. And truth is, I also like my creature comforts. So how do you walk the line between being off the grid and still powering a few gadgets? Well, more and more RVers these days are going solar. And we found a kit from Zebra Energy, the SunSparks solar charging system that may be about as close to plug and play as you can get with a solar upgrade. It's a basic kit, 150 watt solar panel, a 30 amp charge controller, remote monitor so you can mount the charge controller out of sight somewhere in a cabinet or a, a storage compartment, a battery temperature probe, Z brackets and hardware for mounting the panel up on the roof, and a fairly ample amount of cable. Walking through the install, we'll lay it out, deciding where the panels and each of the components will be installed. We'll head out on a little shopping trip because even though the SunSparks kit is close to plug and play, the Zebra folks have no way of knowing where my batteries are, for example, or where I'm going to want to mount the components. Then we'll mount the charge controller close to the batteries. We'll connect those batteries and the temperature sensor to the charge controller. We'll mount the LCD remote monitor inside our trailer and plug it into the charge controller. Then it's up on the roof to install the panel, attaching the Z brackets first to the panel and then to the roof. We'll connect the panel to the controller and finally we'll take a run out to the beach to see how the SunSparks kit does charging and recharging the batteries for a few days. So, first things first. We're up on the roof to find an appropriate space for the panel. The panel is two and a half feet by five feet, and we're going to want to run the cable down through the refrigerator vent so we're not drilling holes through the roof. The best spot seemed to be just forward of that vent. Once the cable's down the vent closet, we'll hang a left and go through a closet inside the RV, then into the outside storage compartment. Inside the trailer, we'll mount the controller in the forward area of that storage compartment so we're within striking distance of the batteries with the sensor cable. And we'll follow the same path through the floor and forward to the A-frame with the battery cables as well. Then we'll run the monitor cable into the wall and up so we can mount the monitor in the same vicinity as some of the other RV controls. Having a plan to work with and having some measurements jotted down, it's off to grab a couple of additional components and some supplies. Firstly, anytime you're working with electrical components, you'll want to spend the extra money to install the RVIA suggested breakers and cutoff switches. In our case, about 35 bucks worth. And the battery cables I mentioned? Again, you could cheap out on this, but it's electrical. You don't want to. Marine grade number eight cable here, about 25 feet with the connectors, ran us about $30. Now, Zebra does include a cable to connect the controller to the remote monitor but it wasn't long enough to mount the monitor exactly where we wanted it. Turns out though, that's a standard Ethernet computer cable, so a longer version of that cable was an easy get. And don't forget, we're attaching screws into the roof and running cables through the floor, so we'll need some weatherproof silicone, some lap sealer, and some industrial grade weatherproof double-sided tape to ensure weatherproof seals and a solid watertight mount. The controller install is very straightforward. In my case, I chose to reinforce the wall of the compartment for a more solid mounting of the controller. Otherwise, this is just four screws, making sure to give myself enough room to get at the wiring ports. The next step, much more easily said than done, is the battery cables. You pretty much have to make these cables yourself if your batteries are more than a couple feet from where you install the controller. This would include most travel trailers, where the batteries will typically be on the A-frame. Attaching the connectors to 8 gauge wire takes a pretty substantial crimping tool. I was able to get some help from a friend. Working with your auto mechanic to have the cables custom made might also be a plausible scenario. Also, if your battery cables are more than 3 feet long, be sure to install an inline fuse in the positive cable close to the battery. On the other hand, almost as easily done as said, Running those battery cables from the interior to the exterior of the trailer and out to the A-frame or vice versa is as simple as drilling a single hole in the floor just big enough for the three cables to run through. 
we'll seal that up with weatherproof silicone as a finishing touch. Clamp the temperature sensor head and the positive battery cable to the positive battery terminal. Connect the negative cable to the negative terminal and plug them all into the marked ports on the charge controller. Mounting the LCD remote monitor is a pretty basic matter of drilling a hole in the wall and fishing the cable up through the wall and attaching the housing and monitor to the wall. The cable connectors are RJ45s, so the port to connect the other end of the controller is well marked and obvious. Up on the roof, we'll attach the panel with the supplied hardware and the double-sided tape, then apply the lap seal around the Z brackets. For me, the part that got real interesting was running the cable down the refrigerator vent. Very long story short, it took a great deal of patience and a little old-fashioned ingenuity to thread the cable through existing cable clamps in the refrigerator closet so the cable would hug the wall of the closet, staying clear of the coils. Once the cable is threaded through the walls and into the outside storage compartment, we'll connect the solar panel to the charge controller, flip the cutoff switch, and the system is live. It's mid-July in Southern California, so we're getting plenty of sun hitting the panel. Our single panel is putting out 19 to 20 volts, and when the battery charge gets down around 12.2 volts or less, the Zebra system is pumping 8 amps in full sun. Four days of normal electrical, LED lights, music system, charging phones, laptops, we didn't fire up the generator at all. Now, use of the furnace, for example, would most likely have pushed us over the line. But if we didn't want to take this unit to the next level, the SunSparks kit is designed to take up to three panels. Simply put, the Zebra SunSparks solar kit has been a game changer for us. Shooting like a, uh, well, shooting like a star right to the top of our list of favorite things. <laughs>